I don't want to see Grab help rider to beli rumah tau. Mm. Right? You know, you had a video recently mm. about whether you should really buy a house. <laughs> right? I don't want to encourage people to do it for no reason. Mm. Right? I think uh, if you were to take on financing or debt or whatever, one of the things people need to learn is... Guys, I need to something I buy inside Assalamualaikum dan good morning ya untuk semua orang yang datang ke podcast FF Pod dan untuk hari ini uh, I ada guest yang special. Kau orang kalau pergi TikTok eh dia dia buat konten yang very menarik. Dia, dia similar to mine cara bercakap tu bersahaja tapi konten dia sungguh worldwide. Uh, dia selalu pakai kopiah dan pakai kotak eh. Ya yeah, betul. <laughs> so, dia punya maybe maybe nak nak buat konten tu sebelum solat ke apa? Selalunya selepas solat uh, Jumaat. Selepas solat Jumaat. Uh. Okay, so uh, I sebut nama dia Saifi Akta. Yeah. You guys boleh follow dia, boleh check dia punya account dekat TikTok uh, Saifi Akta Isaf. Eh. Ya, yeah, betul. Uh, ada account lain ke? Tak ada, satu saja. Uh, uh. Thanks a lot for coming. Uh. Uh, it's been a pleasure lah to to be able to see someone yang I pun ada minat. Ada minat. The way that you buat content, hmm. sungguh informatif. Thank uh, you. Macam mana? Ken, ken, apa, apa tujuan Saifi nak buat Konten uh, dekat TikTok ni sebenarnya So sebenarnya I started After getting some uh, Advice From my team At Pertama Digital Back then Pertama Digital Okay And uh, what happens is that I'm someone who shares A lot of knowledge I okay. like to Talk to my team Upgrade their talent mm-hmm. uh, Try to get them to Explore new areas Of their capabilities Semua macam tu That's right? your leadership Punya start lah Yeah Right And I started to hear That people said Eh kenapa you tak share Okay, with more people. To the world. Yeah. So, it first started with uh, people asking me to buat video uh, untuk internal use dalam company. Hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. And I said, it's not natural to me. Mm-hmm. Right? But eventually, I got the hang of it. I got some, you know, a great team to 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 uh, put me on the right path. Mm-hmm. And I'm quite pleased with the content that we have created. Okay, so, yeah. so the content memang, like I said, informative, yang mm. something yang kita tak minta pun, tak ada mm. pun kita nak tahu pasal benda ni. Tetapi bila kita scroll, scroll, scroll TikTok tu, because uh, we know that TikTok pakai algorithm, mm. they know that we like, I mean, people like me suka knowledge, mm. tiba-tiba keluar. Betul. Eh, seronok lah content ni. Betul. And bersahaja, tapi very, very informative, simple, mm. just simple enough for us mm. to understand without cranking our brains sebab nak tengok TikTok kan. Mm. Okay, tapi tadi uh, Saifi ada kata pasal kerja dengan pertama digital. Boleh terangkan tak? Pertama digital ni apa? Pertama digital tu, dia uh, satu main market company. Alright, so okay. main market listed on Besar Malaysia. Mm-hmm. And sebelum ni, uh, pertama digital, nama dia Sinotop Berhad. Right, so Sina Top Berhad was in the business of uh, manufacturing kain, okay? okay, and they had a brand called John Master. Yeah, I know John Master. Ah, so John Master was uh, macam uh, uh, pakaian kerja klasik mm-hmm. lah, alright, um, from 1980s onwards. Mm-hmm. It's not too expensive, kan? Dia punya harga betul. Marhan. Betul, Marhan. Bukan Marhan lah, <laughs> macam okay lah, bukan dia. Yeah, it was a it was a everyday workman wear. Right. Okay. And uh, dia agak popular lah. But, of course, in 2000s onwards, competition was very hot. Okay. So, manufacturing is one thing, but the high street retail brands, Zara, Topshop, Marks and Spencer, all these brands all started coming in, eating into the space. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, Uniqlo, you know, brands like this. And so, their market share started to decline. Right. And it came to a point where they needed to transform. Okay. So that was about 2018, 2019. Mm-hmm. Okay. And at that time, uh, dia cari peluang macam mana nak masuk digital, right? How are we going to explore digital world, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, a lot of these companies are legacy companies, legacy management. Mm-hmm. And that transformation is almost like going to the moon. Mm-hmm. It's so difficult to do. Uh, and they always think of, you know, let's talk, call in some consultants, Okay, let's see how we can uh, get some advice on where to go with this company. And typically, they get advice around the typical lah, fintech or jadi reseller, cloud services lah, mm-hmm. jadi contractor government lah, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, these are the kind of advice that they get. And uh, uh, I was a consultant as well at that point. And so, I came in and said to them, di Malaysia ni, there's one big opportunity which is government digitalization. In particular, so it's not about uh, 
digital banking. It's not about e-wallet. It's not about uh, you know cloud services. Kesuma. These things are all important. But the biggest pie that is untouched right now is still government digitalization, mm-hmm. right? And uh, I said, if you want to actually build something of uh, value, why don't we go into this? Okay. Can you give one few examples of uh, government services yang belum lagi digitalized kan? Belum lagi digitalized. At the point on the way to getting there. Okay, so uh, let's 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 say this. Uh, Uh, bila kita ada uh, anak baru yang baru lahir, right. right? We have to fill up a physical form, mm-hmm. and that form needs to be chopped by the doctor ke or the uh, nurse or whatever, and then we have to bring that form somewhere, submit. Baru boleh keluar, keluar the the card from JPN kan, mm-hmm. the birth cert and all that kind of stuff. Okay. That process can be automated and digitalized. Right? Imagine, uh, in the, in the, uh, of course, the joyous day of your life. But it is such a uh, stressful day, busy day. You are handling ma ayah lah, grandparents lah. You know, people want to ziarah all that, and then you still have to go and do this paperwork, mm-hmm. right? So that can be automated, and other countries have done it using uh, digital ID, which mm-hmm. is something that I am a champion of lah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, so um, tadi Encik Safi ada kata pasal masuk pertama digital but mm. what was before pertama digital? So, I uh, I've always been an entrepreneur mm-hmm. so I I'm a usahawan okay and I have been like this since uh, dari kecil dulu right so from primary school onwards to be honest I used to sell uh, majalah in school I used to sell uh, collectible pens mm-hmm. uh, once we went to secondary school It used to be uh, used mobile phones, right? Mobile Which phones. I then sold to my foreign worker friend to jual kat Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, semua, right? Mm-hmm. So I've been doing all this all my life. Uh, I I I had an interesting uh, household because on one side I had an educator as a parent, my mother, she was a school principal. Mm-hmm. On the other side, I had a father who was a hardcore entrepreneur, mm-hmm. right? So he was. Like that as well, you know. He's always doing business, striking deals, selling, you know, and uh, and uh, and growing his wealth in that way. And so I saw the the benefits of both sides. But I started to steer a lot more to the entrepreneur side. Right. Okay, so uh, I attended college. I went on to read law, um, but all the way while I was studying, I was still doing business. Oh wait, so so you did legal lah. I did legal, yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, background a bit for those who are uninitiated. Mm. Uh, you are not a Malaysian. Bukan. I am from. I'm South Malaysian. This Singapore. <laughs> South Malaysian. <laughs> <laughs> Johorians would be uh, macam marah tu kalau, kalau <laughs> you call yourself a South Malaysian. Yeah. Uh, I believe we are one. Ah, okay. Mm. Mm. I believe we are one. Yeah, because uh, both parties keep on coming to and visit each other. Indeed, we uh, are like the family member that uh, actually. Come and visit each other, and we like to mengamuk and semua. But actually, we love each other. Yeah, and we enjoy each other's punya offerings, <laughs> especially when Singaporeans come to Malaysia. Mm. They become a bird. <laughs> chip, a bird. Chip, 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 chip. chip, 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 chip. <laughs> that is the first time I've heard that, <laughs> and it's a wonderful joke. I'll, I'll take it from now on. Uh, I took it for someone else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, okay. no. Actually, it wasn't a joke. When mm. when he said it, mm. they bagi warning to Singaporeans lah. Mm. When you come to Malaysia. Mm. Jaga lah hati orang Malaysia sikit. Mm. Don't become a bird. Mm. Don't keep on saying, wow, so cheap lah, so cheap. Because, because, when the pekedai pun, I mean, he's saying this mm. uh, for his own sake jugalah. Mm. Bila pekedai kata, Singaporeans kata, this is so cheap, mm. what do they do? They raise the prices. They increase the prices. Yeah. Then, then uh, everyone rugi, including the Malaysian. <laughs> so that's good entrepreneurship, mm. right? Mm. But at the same time, uh, for me, I look at the cheap, cheap, cheap thing from another perspective. For us, it's not cheap lah. Oh, it's right? not for us living in Malaysia. Oh, okay, okay, okay? Yes, yes, yes. It's not cheap, Mm-mm-mm. right? So, uh, yeah, if you divide everything by three and a half, everything becomes cheap. Mm-hmm. But to be honest, uh, we can't compare in that way. And every country that that has a land border, uh, one having a stronger economy than the other, has the same problem, right? You have it with Mexico and the US as well. That's right. Yeah. Right? Uh, you have it with uh, Spain and Morocco, mm-hmm. right? That you get just a short ferry right away. There's the same issue, but um. Um, I think Singaporeans could be a bit more sensitive, lah. Yeah, they, sure. can. Hmm. they can. They uh, can, and then of course there are comments that Singaporeans, being Singaporeans, may be less sensitive than most people in the country, lah. 
Maybe. <laughs> most, can, most people in the, in the world. Encik <laughs> uh, Safi nak tanya lah. Uh, so, dalam company-company yang Encik uh, Safi pernah mm. bekerja lah, eh, uh, company mana yang ada paling banyak potensi untuk awak kena business yang today lah yang orang boleh mulakan to become big because you you said that you coming from a line of entrepreneurs yep. and you are an entrepreneur juga yep. if other than uh, government this digitization lah uh, something that maybe quite big jugalah uh, big endeavor mm. uh, something yang boleh buat on the ground right now okay so one of the 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 earliest business yang awal-awal saya buat in london was uh, a concierge service. Concierge, okay? So okay. at that time, saya nak beli kereta kat London. Mm-hmm. Tapi, uh, my parents were like, you know, we already sponsored your education. Okay. We don't want to buy you a car, right? Mm-hmm. Kalau nak beli, right? I want you to uh, work for it, right? Okay. So, uh, what I decided to do was I started a concierge service. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Malaysia, sorry, London is mm-hmm. like the second home for Malaysia VIP, right? Mm-hmm. Every holiday, summer holiday ke, Christmas holiday, all go there, right? Mm. So what I did was, at that time, there was only Facebook Messenger. Mm-hmm. The Instagram tak ada, TikTok tak ada, Twitter also was just in its early days, okay? And so what I did was, I went to Facebook and I marketed to anak-anak VIP mm. <laughs> through Facebook, right? And they were all these Malaysian student societies, right? And I said, look, if any of your parents are coming or whatever, can you please let them know that I can pick them up at the airport. I boleh bawa you all shopping, Bista Village lah semua. I boleh uh, bawa ke uh, tempat makan halal. Mm-hmm. I can bring you for solat semua, all I can bring you, okay? Mm-hmm. So uh, what happens is people started to book. And my rates at that time were uh, dalam seribu pound per week, right? So I charge you on a weekly basis. And uh, I was fully booked, okay. right? So I think a business like that, why is it good? Why? Because first, you are uh, you are spending your own effort and time um, as a premium, okay? Uh, you don't need a big team, right? The only asset you need is your 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 time and maybe a vehicle, mm-hmm. Um, some online marketing and the best thing that happened is that I made a lot of connections and network mm. right because I was spending time in cars with people that are uh, the who's who in Malaysia mm. right and uh, that's what attracted me to actually move to Malaysia because I launched this business that put me in the driver's seat literally next to people who were captors of industry mm. right uh, so I think a lot of young people should be doing that tourism in Malaysia needs a big boost, you know. Mm-hmm. We don't want people to keep running away to hard yeah, yeah, Okay. Can. Mm-hmm. You know? So uh, I think young people or people who are looking to start a business, one thing you can do is go into tourism. I just I was in Malacca over the over December holidays mm-hmm. and I uh, hired a tour guide and uh, for a day the fee was about thousand plus ringgit. Okay. Okay. Uh but she was amazing. You know, amazing. Uh, I, I think more people need to do things like that. Mm-hmm. So so you see ada ruang lah untuk ada, mesti ada. Tapi this is a very uh, human capital heavy business eh? mm. So for a business owner so because we're talking about business mm. for us to expand uh, one of the ways is to hire more people. Betul. But to what extent sebab you know uh, these people once they are trained they boleh je buka dia punya own agency for example. Betul. So uh, the challenge mm. with this job in particular is uh, the demand. Why? Because you can have regular customer. Mm-hmm. Tapi customer tu dia punya schedule, dia punya holiday booking semua, it's not always the same. Of course. So you you are you, you are kind of under overlap, right? So you must have a team where the demand uh, of of uh, of bookings can actually be shared amongst a few people. Mm-hmm. Baru as a team you are always getting the amount of revenue that you need, right? Otherwise you're going to miss out on sales. Mm-hmm. You know, so for me for example on uh, summer holiday, I might get booking from Dato A And then two days later, Datuk B nak masuk. Mm-hmm. But I I cannot because I already committed to this guy. Huh? By right, I should have a backup. And I'll say, Datuk, don't worry. My backup, you know, he's great. He has the same car and he'll pick you up. You see, then I can do some revenue share. Mm-hmm. So that's how we have to think. Lah. You know, the thing about entrepreneurship, lah, we have to stop thinking about it as how what is in it for me. Mm-hmm. I think entrepreneurship, kita need to change a little bit and think about what I can do for others and how I can uh, channel value to other mm-hmm. people. What do you think mm. about uh, social entrepreneurship? I mean, I we, love that. We have a social and we have a vice, we have vice businesses. Mm. Whatever they sell, it's not just uh, 
uh, bad but detrimental to the purchases. Betul. But social entrepreneurship, they whatever they sell, it's actually for something good, something good for the community. Yep. So is this a space that Malaysia or Malaysians boleh tap into? And what examples are there? Okay, so uh, I think in the Malaysian context, sometimes when we look at social entrepreneurship, we think of, okay, kita dapat orang yang ex-addict or whatever, mm. all of you do some handicraft, so first kita jual kat bazaar, mm. and then, you know, this is a very low-value item, and then some of this goes back to NGO and all that. Mm. I think that's sometimes what we view as social entrepreneurship. But I think we need to really expand it a lot wider than that. So one of my... Uh, uh, I would say my idols uh. I don't know whether that's the right word but it's someone that I really look up to is this gentleman he's a Nobel Peace Prize winner uh, his name is Muhammad Yunus mm-hmm. Muhammad Yunus started uh, this bank called Grameen Bank in Bangladesh and and what they did was uh, he was extending microloan mm-hmm. to groups of women at the time five to seven women um, and he would tell them or train them and say that you all need to jual benda ni because benda ni, benda ni ada demand kat bandar, mm-hmm. right? So you all are in the village. You need to make this item because I can help you sell it. Mm-hmm. If you go and make something which has no demand, right? No use, right? Mm-hmm. So if you can do this, I will help you to uh, set up your business and I'll give you the capital. So that's what he did. And so he started that in the 1970s and Grameen Bank has grown. And even now, it is uh, a profitable bank, mm-hmm. right? It is not... Uh, HSBC, mm-hmm. you know, but it has it is a bank that has created so much value uh, amongst women in particular. And he had a very interesting uh, finding, which is that women are actually better uh, paymasters mm. than men, than men eh? right? Because women typically are incorruptible, especially when they have families. Actually, mm. uh, coming from the bank, mm. uh, I did think juga, mm. kalau perempuan dengan lelaki ni, mm. I mean, we have uh, dari segi income and commitment, mm. dia akan tengok kerja sekolah. Mm. And then dari segi lelaki dan perempuan pun ada juga. They said that it's because perempuan ni kalau orang call, tak bayar hutang, dia malu. Dia terus mana? Lelaki kalau tak bayar hutang, this is what they say lah. Uh, tak apalah, later lah, ganggu je. Tapi kalau perempuan dia sendiri segan. Bila orang accuse dia, tak bayar balik hutang. Yeah, Social pressure. <laughs> yeah, social yeah. pressure. Although the conversation between the phone caller, the bank, and the borrower yang tak bayar hutang tu, it's just between them. Tapi orang tak tahu pun, you don't have to tell anyone that dia, you tak bayar hutang. Tapi dia sendiri boleh rasa macam dia segan lah kalau tak bayar hutang. Uh, tapi going back to the to the, to the bank tadi tu, uh, what what stops this bank from instead of extending a loan, because a loan comes with uh, interest ataupun profit pun profit lah eh, for Islamic financing, but it is still a commitment that you are obliged to pay. But what if this uh, apa bank, instead of extend them a loan, a financing, tapi invest dalam company tu? For a share, well, so I uh, I think of course that's an opportunity as well. I and a lot of these facilities were actually uh, designed as uh, I would say venture debt lah. Let's put it that way, mm. right? In the sense that at a certain point, if business to maju, mm-hmm. and uh, there was a chance for the bank to take a share, they can actually do so. Right, mm. so in startup world, you call it a safe note, lah. Right, mm. safe note is when an investor uh, gives you money and it's actually debt, uh, but at a future time they or future point they can convert it into equity. Right, mm. so uh, that can also be done for these kind of small businesses. Mm. But the challenge is this: I think social businesses, um, you know, the, the why I mentioned Grameen Bank in particular mm. is because we need to think bigger, right? Mm. The impact. So we have these five digital banks that have just come out, right? Right. And I've been, uh, you know, quite uh, vocal about it. Right? That's right, yeah. And I think the reason why Bank Negara releases a license when we already have something like 20 retail banks mm-hmm. is because they want to see innovation in the space, especially when it comes to serving the underserved. And in fact, if you look at the digital bank framework that Bank Negara released, I think it was 2020, it clearly says underserved, right? Underserved, okay. right? The thing is, some of these applicants, they have, I wouldn't say twist, but they have defined underserved uh, quite liberally, mm-hmm. including, for example, uh, SME. And they're saying that SMEs are also underserved. Maybe yes, true. Maybe not enough, uh, like, you know, to open an SME bank account is quite a complicated process. Mm-hmm. Uh, the SME bank portals, none of them are great, right? All of them are still quite archaic in terms right. of what they look like and all that. Perhaps it is underserved. Maybe SMEs need to have access to loan or capital uh, even earlier than three years, right? By using other data points to credit score them. Perhaps mm-hmm. I believe in all that. But what about the urban? Oh, sorry, the the rural people. Mm-hmm. 
our rural Malaysians, right, who are sitting in all these corners outside of our urban hubs, how are we going to extend them the opportunity to start a business and to actually close this social so economic gap? We're going to have that problem, right? I meet a lot of great people who, uh, who, who have potential to become entrepreneurs and start good businesses, but they just don't have access to capital, okay. right? And I think the digital banks... Um, were brought in or, or, or allowed to, to to get a license for this reason in particular. At least they're supposed to be lah. Yeah, so uh, there's this there's this company called uh, eFishery in uh, Indonesia mm-hmm. that actually sets up or sells agricultural systems, right? So they allow you to set up a fish farm. Mm-hmm. And I believe it can be done in urban environment as well as rural environment. And once you set up the fish farm, they'll train you, they'll sell you all the bahan-bahan zuma. Uh, and, and when you start to rear fish, um, once it's all mature, they help you to sell it. They help you to sell to market or they sell directly to restaurant and all this. Uh, and I think they've done a hundred over thousand entrepreneurs, for example, right? Mm-hmm. And, and if I'm not wrong, they are extending financing as well. Uh, that's what we should be doing here. Mm-hmm. That's what Malaysian or digital banks uh, should be igniting, that kind of entrepreneurship. For the hundred thousand or for the company itself that you're thinking about? Uh, no, I'm, I'm thinking about... Uh, Enabling entrepreneurs, okay, and in particular, okay. Mm. So, so because uh, a company such as that, the one that you mentioned, mm. patutnya the access to financing should be rather easy, lah. If they they have a tech record of hundred people subscribing oh, to their products, e fishery is a unicorn. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, so we're talking about the smaller entrepreneurs, lah. Mm. But what's stopping the banks, the normal banks, from serving them? I mean, uh, sure, uh, being a physical bank means that they can't really open in ulu ulu, lah. They cannot open it uh, in the rural areas. But most of the services are already online. For some of them, you boleh buka bank account online. Why, why the need for a push for a fully digital bank? So, uh, I have a mentor and he is the CFO of one of the uh, the leading uh, banks in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, not, not current, in the past. And uh, he told me something. He said, Saifi, imagine you get married to someone. Mm. And when you're getting married, you tell the person, I'm only here for five years. So after five years, I'm going to split up. I'm going to go somewhere else. Are you going to put 100% into that marriage? No. Right? The answer is no. Right? <clears throat> and he says that when banks have leadership, right? Typically, it's because of a very long career journey or path. And now I've ended up at the top. You're just not going to rock the boat. Mm. Okay, we are not going to try to break barriers. We're not going to try to say, you know, let's disrupt everything and start from scratch. Mm-hmm. You're already at really the top, bro. Mm. Right? So, uh, what happens is, he says that when we have leadership that is trying to protect instead of take steps, right. that's what happens. And banks are, you look at the pandemic, all the banks came out more profitable. That's right, yeah. Okay? So, why would they rock that boat? By taking risks. Because no matter what, entrepreneurship is risky mm-hmm. okay it is the it is a risky form of lending and that's why they call it venture right venture if you look at venture capital something like what 90% of startups fail mm-hmm. uh, and that's why venture capital is 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 necessary so that people can take these bets but venture capital is a whole nother animal mm-hmm. why because they're looking for outsized return okay they want to find the next unicorn they right. want to find the billion dollar company um, so they take a lot of bets. They call it spray and pray, right? Mm-hmm. But the guy who wants to start a fish farm, he's not going to become a unicorn, just one fish farm. He's going to create a few jobs. He's going to, you know, uh, take care of his family. You know, he's going to buy some property for himself. He's going to have a nice life. But he's not going to be a unicorn. Venture capital is not interested in him. That's right. Right? So the digital banks are supposed to bridge this gap. Right, to, to serve the underserved. Lah. Betul. It doesn't look so good. <laughs> as, is, as, as it is. Lah. As it is. Sekarang ni, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at GX Bank. Right. Uh, there are a few others that are coming up. Um, I think Eon is launching soon. CAF Invest, uh, CAF Digital Bank is also coming up. Correct. So I'm, I'm very interested to see what their offerings are. And I understand, Bank Negara has put uh, another syarat over there. Mm. Syarat is, dalam lima tahun, kena become sustainable. All right? Mm-hmm. You have to become a sustainable bank in five years. It means that they also have to manage their risk in such a way that uh, they can deliver on that. Otherwise, the license might get pulled back. That's right, yeah. So, of course, they're not going to take outsized risk, mm-hmm. but at least a portion of it has to be, right? Mm-hmm. Don't you think? So, if you are focusing 80% on, say, urban SMEs, let's mm-hmm. say, fine. 
but I want to see that 20%. Right? Can you show me exactly how, what kind of risk are you going to take on fresh, brand new entrepreneurs? Okay, if we look mm. at your TikTok account, I mm. mean, uh, let's, let's let the cat out of the bag. Uh, you did talk about GS Bank a mm. bit and mm. then you criticized the same thing that you just did just now. Uh, similar, lah, similarly. Uh, but may I play a devil's advocate in saying that maybe they're trying to consolidate funds through the urban areas to do before they have enough to extend this money to those underserved. I mean, they have to do one over the other. Lah. Mm. I mean, uh, Grab being Grab, they are rather unprofitable. Mm. Uh, so, so for them to actually go in, into venture, like you said, macha susah. Lah. So now, by having this digital bank license, linking it up with the Grab your app, though, uh, they can have more funds. People yang ada nak, nak pakai uh, nak pakai Grab pun kena letak duit dalam tu. Mm. And then the drivers pun akan ada duit dalam tu instead of depositing it inside mm. normal banks. They mm. just leave it there lah mm. as the bank. Mm. So now, once the Grab or GS Bank has enough funds, they can use that fund to to ask for more money and then just uh, send it to those underserved. Is that is that a logical thing? It, of thinking? It's logical, but I don't agree with it for one reason. Grab has enough money. They do. Okay. You see, the capital requirement for the digital bank. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was something like 250 million. Okay. So ringgit. Get, okay. Right? It's what, 50 million US? Something mm. like that? Grab has the money. Mm. They don't need to take the money from the urban customers. <laughs> All right? That's A, yeah? But it's nice to have. Correct. But this is the other thing. Grab already serves or works with underserved individuals in their ecosystem and these are riders. Mm-hmm. Okay, I wouldn't say Grab drivers because Grab drivers, if you own your own car and everything, I would say socioeconomically perhaps you are a bit more stable. But mm-hmm. riders in particular who are right. doing delivery, right? These guys are struggling. It's a very difficult job. I wish that Grab launched in a way that was focused on them first. How do we get riders to stop being riders, mm-hmm. all right, and graduate them into becoming FNB owner? Mm-hmm. So that they can be selling the food that they deliver. So, mm-hmm. right? But Saifi, uh, mm-hmm. sorry, I have mm-hmm. to interrupt you there. Maybe Grab's intention is never about. Okay, now now you got me. Maybe their intention is never to graduate this mm. riders to becoming an FMB because someone has to deliver the food. So they might want to keep those people where they are. Is that is that the <laughs> is, is know, that possible? It is hundred percent possible mm. because. Uh, why would you want to cannibalize your own your own supply? That's right, yeah. A workforce, yeah. But that brings us back to our earlier topic on social economic, uh, sorry, on a uh, social uh, enterprise. Mm-hmm. Is that the right thing to do? But I put it this way: as long as these riders they have enough, okay. Put it put it this way: I came I came from the banking background. Uh, most riders and drivers as well, do do do, they have issues about applying for financing. Uh, their payment stops are not accepted by most banks because you know banks can a bit as you said a bit dinosaur lah. So apa ni grab pay income tak stable. Tak you know stable, kerja tiga yeah. ribu kerja empat ribu and then seribu kalau kau malas jadi lima ratus. Mm. So now grab being a bank they are able to help in their own ways as you mentioned the riders to apply for a financing. Now GX being a bank boleh lah they extend can a bigger apa tu panggil lah. Uh, financing for them to buy maybe a car dulu to graduate themselves from being a from rider to apa, driver mm. and then from a driver to a homeowner it's possible mm. so maybe Grab itself is or GS Bank is creating that system they're not addressing the Ulu part but they're still addressing the B40 part if you get my drift I do I uh, so let's let's talk about what I wish GX right. Bank would do okay, okay? and um, ideas are free <laughs> right? I hope if they watch the video, they will use it. All right? Think of the riders. Let's not make people deliver food for M40 and T20 forever. Okay. okay? You can do it uh, as a stopgap measure in between jobs. Mm-hmm. But let's keep it to two years maximum. Mm-hmm. Right? After that, they need opportunities. Mm-hmm. Okay? And the best opportunity in this ecosystem, which is also beneficial to Grab, is for each of these guys to actually start a small business. Mm-hmm. All right? And a small business that also depends on the Grab network. Mm-hmm. You're talking about food, uh, you know, uh, maybe services that are uh, incidental to Grab, like maybe workshops or insurance companies, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, brokers and all that. How can we get identify the, the best Grab riders and give them incentives and give them target and milestone, right? Kalau you capai ni, and this is what you actually achieve, we will unlock for you the opportunity to stop being a rider and we will back you because we have seen your energy and your uh, commitment. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. That's what I want to see Grab do. I don't want to see Grab help rider to beli rumah tau. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, you had a video recently mm-hmm. about whether you should really buy a house. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't want to encourage people to do it for no reason. Mm-hmm. Right? I think uh, if you were to take on financing or debt or whatever, one of the things people need to learn is business lah. Mm-hmm. Right? If you can be extended even 30 grand, 50 grand to start a small business, why not? Mm-hmm. The other thing that Grab has is that they have proprietary information around demand. Mm-hmm. So, think about this. Uh. In a certain area, uh, they would know what the demand is for say pisang goreng mm-hmm. or nasi ayam. Right? And they would know that uh, come peak hour, this particular nasi ayam seller cannot supply the demand mm-hmm. or can't meet the demand. So I think there's room for another two nasi ayam shops, mm-hmm. right? Grab has that information. They should be sharing that information with riders that are capable and saying, I'll find you to book out this place and I'll, I'll teach you how to actually get it done. I think if Grab did that, that would be awesome. Then I think I'll give them a big tick and tick, say uh? that you have done well. Okay, how about this? Mm. Uh, advocate again, mm. maybe Grab <laughs> doesn't want your tick, uh. they want the money. Mm. Uh, put it this way. Let's say, uh, you know about Dilbert, right? Mm. So Dilbert, uh, the, this one uh, principal, uh, you you reward your best salesman mm. to become a manager. Mm. But this salesman is a very good salesman but a horrible manager. Mm. So now you lose a good salesman and you gain a bad manager. So mm. so maybe maybe from Grab's point of view is uh, if they graduate can this good rider to become or promote lah, to mm. become a business owner, mm. they might end up not becoming a business owner. I mean, uh, to run a business takes more than just Uh, grit, you know, mm. grit mm. and hard work. Mm. It takes more than that, maybe even luck. Mm. Uh, so instead of rocking the boat for Grab's current profitable business in terms of uh, food delivery, mm. uh, then uh, in terms of demand and supply, they will let uh, the businesses themselves to figure it out. Mm. Okay, for example, if there's really two, um, uh, apa, two demand for two nasi lemak stores in a particular area, automatically any entrepreneurs will provide that mm. as long as Grab and its network is able to serve both Nasi lemak. So, I mean, that's how I would see it from the grass point of view. They mm. do not, as you said, I mean, it's another big venture unless unless they have so much money mm. that they can actually charge uh, profit or interest to these borrowers and another business venture yang yang a bit lain lah daripada apa yang dia buat sekarang. That's just my point of view lah. Mm. We, we probably can agree to disagree there. Betul. <laughs> so, I would accept that 100% lock, stock and barrel if we are talking about CIMB. Mm. Go with CIMB, okay? Okay. If you said that CIMB stands, okay, I accept. Mm. But uh, these guys are supposed to be the disruptors mm-hmm. and they have been given a mandate to serve the underserved. Mm. And for me, okay, we are talking about the new economy. We are talking about uh, pressures from AI. Okay. Right. Um, I believe that entrepreneurship is not going to be a nice to have anymore. Each one of us, including you, you are an entrepreneur, right? Yeah, yeah. Each of us need to actually eventually be able to start a business of our own, mm-hmm. uh, attract capital, hire people, manage people, uh, serve customers well and gain some value, pay taxes, mm-hmm. right? That's what each of us need to be able to do. Back then, early back then, about more than 10 years ago, when Uber first started in Malaysia, Uber started first right. as a ride sharing. Uh, right. At that time, Grab was my taxi and they were just doing the red caps or blue caps. Right, yeah. And I wanted to figure out exactly how much an Uber driver could actually earn. So, of course, you get Uber drivers, uh, they will give you all kinds of alasan lah, like, uh, boss, tak boleh lah, we only can drive 8 hours a day, uh, kalau bawa 8 uh, jam, this is the earnings, you know, nothing more than that. So I said, I'm going to try for one month, I'm going to try and drive and see uh, how many hours I can actually do, mm-hmm. right? And uh, I just tested lah, right? It's a very difficult job. Okay, it, it don't underestimate how difficult it is to sit in a car for 8 to 10 hours not knowing who is going to be in your back seat, mm. how they treat you, how they smell, how they uh, make you wait in places where you cannot wait and then police come, you're stressed and all that. It's crazy, right? And it takes a lot of toll on your health. Itu baru kereta. Mm. Bike is even worse, you know? And I've seen, you know, I stay in a condo. I nampak orang, huh? pagi-pagi, You know, sorry to my neighbors. Uh, pagi-pagi, uh, order Starbucks, mm-hmm. all right? And this guy is working at 7.30 in the morning or 8 o'clock in the morning, coming on a bike, s- delivering two coffees at 20 bucks and his cut is something, what, three bucks? Mm-hmm. During it, or three ringgit, something like that. 
How long can someone do that, bro? Not right? that long. La. Not that long. So I think uh, I think the banks, or the digital banks, uh, uh, need to create bankable individuals out of these people, the B40s that, uh, that they have built unicorns out upon the backs of, okay? Mm-hmm. Grab will be nowhere if not for these guys. Right. All right? They need to help them become bankable so that the big banks, CIMB, Maybank, you know, they can actually bring them on and later on, those banks are the ones that can take them into the formal uh, ecosystem, um, mortgages, you know, uh, long-term deposits and all that. But what what the digital banks are supposed to do is give them the stepping stone. Mm-hmm. Not just become another, another another bank with a bit of digitalization. That's not enough. Because that can be done by the, the normal banks. Lah. Uh, just another bank with, with digitalization. Tapi, what you mentioned tadi, <laughs> got me thinking. Lah. Mm. But going back, so so let's say they groom these uh, people from unbankable to become bankable. Mm. With all the statements from GX Bank, uh, all the income from Grab, now now they are able to graduate and apply for financing from I mean they become accustomed for a different bank mm. of which GX and Grab would be no part of. Mm. Then in that sense wouldn't GX have less interest ataupun uh, less kepentingan lah untuk grow them up to become bankable. They want they might want to just keep it there ataupun at least give them a way to retain these uh, people as opposed to uh, dulu dia tak bankable, aku dah grow kan jadi bankable, CMB pula ambil. Wouldn't that be a dilemma for GS Bank right now? So, uh, this is the thing. I think uh, management company too, kan? Kalau kita tak bagi uh, like direction, mm-hmm. set the culture mm-hmm. of the company, set the set the, the the objectives of actually what we're trying to achieve. The current grab management will be here for a few years. Mm-hmm. After a while, they move on. If they don't actually set the boundaries of actually what they are there to do, mm-hmm. That's what's going to happen. They're going to be protective around these customers and eventually they will start selling mortgages. <laughs> okay? And then when they start selling mortgages, it's such a safe business. Mm. They're going to eventually become CMB. Right, right. Over right. the course of <clears throat> 10 years. That's not what they're supposed to do. They're not supposed to do. I mean, that's part of the agreement dengan Ben Garela. Uh, bukan. In, with Benagara, it is about uh, they, have, they, have a, they have a capital limit, right? right? Mm-hmm. And for, for the first few years, after that, it becomes unlimited, I believe. Mm. Uh uh, uh, and they have to achieve profitability and all that, and they have to serve the underserved. Mm. But if they tick all those boxes in seven years, who says that they can't become the next CIMB with without branches? That's all. The only shara is they tak boleh operate branch, mm-hmm. right? But it can be all digital. Eventually, they will follow the money, like you're saying, mm-hmm. right? This is what shareholders want. Uh, this is the most uh, risk managed product that we can sell. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will create the customers. We'll push them to this product, and that's it. Right, uh, the organization will become lazy. Mm-hmm. All organizations go up on this S curve. I'm sure you're familiar, right? Yeah. Once it reaches the mature stage, it plateaus, That's right. and then you either slip down or you just you know go on in the plateau for a bit longer or fail. I think that if they don't set a boundary and say that you know these are the type of customers we hold, we want them to graduate, and once they graduate, we want them to be able to be served by the wider banking community. Mm-hmm. I think that's a mature thing to do. Alright. Hmm. Okay, uh, Safi, we move on to another topic. Eh? But tadi, Safi ada cakap pasal AI. Hmm. And AI might... Uh, well, it, it is here. Hmm. It is here. What do you think of uh, AI? And uh, I mean, the biggest issue yang sekarang ni lah. Ramai orang takut AI replacing their, themselves and their jobs. Hmm. What do you think? Okay, so, saya ni, I'm a big fan of AI. Same. Okay, so macam ni ya. Eh? So, I am, uh, as you can tell, I'm not a, a native uh, Bahasa Melayu speaker. Okay, but I try my best. I chuba, okay? I try my best. Sometimes I get questions or uh, documents that I need to read. And uh, some of the Bahasa uh, Melayu too, like a bit too complicated for me. What I do is I use AI to translate it. Mm-hmm. It's fast and it not only can translate, it can also give me and highlight the key points. But, but translation has always been here, even before AI. But, okay, this is the beauty of it. Huh? Mm. Uh, I, I, in the past, you could use Google Translate. That's right. Yeah. Google Translate was never super accurate, but possible. Right. I have set up my AI, right, to give me three versions of translation. Mm-hmm. The first version is uh, macam bahasa baku, mm-hmm. right? Like memang macam kamus kind of um, <laughs> uh, uh, translation. Second is uh, conversational Malay, and the last one is uh, Malay inter- interspersed with English. 
Hmm. Okay. So macam I macam kita buat ni lah. Ah macam ni. <laughs> macam ni. Okay. So I can then take that content and I can understand it, absorb it better, and also share it with other people. Okay. Uh, that's how it assists me with my work. Mm-hmm. If I had a full-time translator, mm. macam I'm a politician going to the UN, mm. okay, I'm from Iran or something, and uh, you know, there's a full-time translator sitting next to you and whispering the things in English, maybe for someone like that, their job eventually is going to be at risk if you're looking at the aspect of translation only, mm-hmm. right? Because I think uh, AI is going to do a very good job of that. But I've been playing around with anything to do with creativity around AI, and it's actually still very poor, right? And, you know, I think AI has been around now for uh, for, for ages, but, you know, as in uh, consumer-facing, chat GPT and all it's that, about two years it's now, about right? two years, right? Since early last year? Uh, since, this yeah, year. Since, since December 2022, mm-hmm. right? Creativity is still very poor. Mm-hmm. So no matter how much I ping Del E mm-hmm. uh, to give me some things that are very specific, it still can't do it without my artistic Impulse. instruction, right? Right? So I believe that uh, a lot of the opportunities that we are going to have to retain is around creative works, mm-hmm. right? Entertainment, uh, 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 trying to trying to trying to to uh, connect with the emotions of other human beings, right? Anything to do with relationship, and that's why when you asked me just now about a business, mm-hmm. uh, business manner, young orang boleh start. Mm-hmm. AI can do can, concierge, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't have the warmth. It doesn't make you look forward to meeting it, right? So far, lah, it doesn't, right? So I believe that we need to start looking at this. Now, if any job is menial enough, okay, like in the studio, ni, you have a beautiful studio, mm-hmm. right? You. you have a great team. You The team has uh, set up this place, right? The lighting is perfect. The mic is perfect. The cameras and everything, right? It can't be done by AI. Right, so that's of a lot of value, and not only that, they are working in an industry which is growing, which is content creation, mm-hmm. right, and digital media and so on. Those kind of jobs are not at risk when it comes to AI. Mm-hmm. Perhaps if you had someone who's only doing script writing, mm-hmm. then maybe yes, that person might have a bit of an issue, lah. Right mm-hmm. now, I think uh, all of us need to learn how to use AI to our advantage, like I mentioned with translation earlier. Um, all of us need to have a subscription if possible you know mm-hmm. I would I would replace any Astro subscription or whatever with a chat GPT for uh, subscription yeah we do have uh, chat GPT and Adobe Wonderful. Adobe has its own AI in yes. and Canva also has their own AI yes. so obviously being a production company yes. content production company yep. we do have a uh, subscription to AI and Transcriptor I mean now you mention it I mean I can there's so many of them and they can add up but if you add them up, point, they don't cost more than a single employee. Correct. <laughs> Correct. So what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? Uh, and this is why I'm such a proponent of entrepreneurship. Mm. Okay, There's not going to be enough jobs for everyone. Mm. Population is growing, right? Globally, not just in Malaysia, right? We are having more mouths to feed and more jobs that we need to create. Uh, what can be done, right? We need people to be able to start businesses. Mm. Right, and businesses does not always have to be unicorn, tech business, fintech. Tapaya, businesses can be simpler. Uh, and I think if we were to, you know, I was having this conversation recently about uh, education mm-hmm. and how important education is in the context of uh, of this year uh, or the future. Sorry, and I watched one of your videos. You had a guest uh, recently. I think it was I think Doctor Aini. Is it? Dr. Ayn. Oh, Dr. Ayn, yes. Sorry. Yes. That's right. The Economist. The Economist. Uh, and he said, uh, when an influencer says, I will not send my... Oh, uh, you don't need to actually go to university. Mm. And he said that what you should do is ask, tanya influencer too. Mm-hmm. Kalau anak you sendiri, you hantar okay. tak? Huh. Right? He said that. Right. Uh, I'm telling you, for me, from my perspective, mm-hmm. I have already told my children, um, you don't need to go to university. Mm-hmm. Now, I've told them now. I've said that I want you to uh, focus on creativity and morals and ethics. I want you to be a good person, and I want you to have. I want you to be someone who thinks out of the box. I don't want. I don't want to introduce boundaries to you too early on. Mm-hmm. There'll come a point where you are a young adult. I want you to go out there and explore what resonates with you, 
Okay, mm. I want you to go into the market. Try being a banker for a while. Try being a consultant for a while. Try being a grab driver for a while. Doesn't matter. Try a few different things. Okay, keep your commitments super low mm. so that you have the freedom to do so. That's right. And maybe in three, four, five years, you will then know I am super good at this particular thing. At that point, if formal education is going to help you have a leg up, go and do it. Mm. Right? I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm saying do it once you decide what you need to do. Right? right. Um, I I I had formal education, but uh, most of the time I spent uh, not really learning, but I spent time being a net, building a network. Right. And essentially, that network could have been built anyway. Without that uh, formal education, one. Without paying a few hundred grand. Few hundred grand okay. in pounds. Uh, yeah, of course, you know, <laughs> back then, right? Yeah, actually, I had a yeah. question. You got like question people who, actually, I mean, not the people at the system who actually send people uh, students to matriculasi at the mm. diploma at the age of what 17 mm. at 17 you really do not know anything if you really want to become a dentist ke engineer ke that's why so many people either dropped out after after they finished studying they never did what they learned mm. they they studied for chemistry never did chemistry after that and <laughs> i know someone like that <laughs> but you know uh <laughs> Don't you think that's such an inefficient allocation of resources? It is. It right? is. But that's why, that's why in the States, they have this thing called a general degree. Mm. I mean, I asked them, what is the general degree in mm. English? Mm. They said, they just learn a few bit here, a few bit there, mm. but, but they're still paying tuition to the university. Like, I guess that's, the university is trying to cater to people who talk like that. Mm. They don't know what they want, but they still want the students' money. Mm. So they bagi. But after a while, they have to choose lah. Tapi lah, general degree forever. Hmm. Tapi wouldn't it be better for them to actually just leave. Because the states, they okay, skit. Hmm. Uh, is the the stigma of not having uh, uh, apa further education tak banyak sangat lah. Hmm. You can still work anywhere, hmm. and you can continue studying after a couple of years. Tapi kat Malaysia ni, since you mentioned it, hmm. stigma is there. Why are you twenty eight and uh, doing your first year degree? So stigma <laughs> is important. I like I like that you talk. You're speaking about stigma. Hmm. Uh, I had a, a employee recently um, mm. that I was having a conversation with and uh, she has a degree and an MBA. Right. And uh, she's in her early 30s. And she's okay, you know. I would say she's uh, struggling but definitely uh, has, a, has a lot of potential. And so I asked, what are your goals, you know, um, in your life? What are you actually trying to achieve and all that? And she says, I want to do a PhD next. Mm. And I was like, okay, uh, how much do you need to do a PhD? You know, how long uh, do you need to take away from work and so on and so forth? And she was detailing it to me. And I said, do you actually need a PhD? Mm. You know, what is the economic value of doing so? And she says, it's not about economic value. I want to make my parents proud. Mm. Okay. So you mentioned stigma. Stigma is not just in the workplace. It's not just in the in the in the commercial sector. It's also when it comes to family and culture. I think that's very unhealthy, mm-hmm. right? Because someone who I, I'm not saying don't do your PhD. We need that. We need people who are academics who are doing you know in depth research help us take things forward. But don't do it to make your parents proud. Right, right, right. Do it because it helps you with your career. Mm-hmm. Right. That's one. Second is for me, when I employ people, tell you a secret. I don't ever look at that CV. Mm. Firstly, before AI, people already faked it. Mm-hmm. After AI, even worse. Right. How many of us are actually going to write our CV properly? Mm. Right? And then you need to go and double check everything. Otherwise, mm. why even believe it? The best way to ascertain someone's capability is having a real human conversation. Um, references are important, but I like to give people a trial run. So what I used to do at Pratama and now with my new project is... Uh, I throw you a project mm-hmm. and I say, okay, this is a scenario. Uh, this is what I need to achieve. Um, I give you seven days. Can you come back to me with a solution, present it and all that, right? Is this before or after they're employed? Before. Before. Before they're so, employed. So they might still have a, a, a normal jo- a job that they're doing. Correct. Um, That's why I give them seven days. Seven days. Okay. Right? So, you know, technically it can be done in one or two days. But if you split it over seven days, you spend one, two hours, you can get it done, right? Many people reject it. Many people say, look, if you're going to ask me to do this, right, I don't want. And I, I give them a, 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 a commitment that I will not use their work, mm. right? So it's not like I ask you to work a before I pay you and then you give me your deck or whatever, nanti I guna, right? Mm-hmm. No, I don't do that. So uh, a lot of people reject and there are those that actually present 
and some of my best hires have given me some superb presentations, mm. right? And all without looking at their CV, you know? So, um, the degree part, the, 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 the stigma around employment and all that, I think it has to be led by business owners or, or management. We need to start creating opportunities for people that don't fit the, the mold uh, to cari peluang lah in our business, right? And uh, for me, I've seen a lot of success doing that. Alhamdulillah. Mm. Uh, to be frank, just uh, we have like 14 employees, mm. 13 or 14. I, I lost count because we've been on a hiring spree. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> well done. And uh, there has uh, there are a handful of SPM leavers mm. and a handful of diploma mm. and a handful of uh, degree. Mm. So to be frank, I it's not that I don't look at them at all mm. at, at all. I look at them to understand the profile of the uh, uh, applicant. Mm. But the most important thing is the work done. Yes, uh, that's, that's that's for my company lah. Yep. Mm. Same. But uh, there are some degrees that may be quite, especially professionally lah. Yes. Uh, doctors, engineers. That those are the jobs that better better require those degrees. Yeah. Uh, I'm saying this because there are accountants is one of them. Because I I know a few accountants who did accounting, and then after they graduate, they hated accounting. Because it's not for everyone, mm. but when I ask them, they say it's because the parents. Mm. So uh, at 17, it's easier for the parents to pressure their children. Mm. At the 28, like mm. your mm. friend cakap mm. PhD. I, I wonder juga lah mm. if they already have a job, a master's yeah. and degree. Yeah. Why this? What else do you want? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if if your if your parents are sponsoring it uh. and not just the degree, but mm. for some reason you are so privileged that they can sponsor your life as well, mm. and they say no matter what, son, you know please do this for me. I'll look after all your obligations. Your current commitments. Uh, yeah. If you are in that kind of family and you really want to do it, Bismillah, what? Uh. But this was not the kind of person. This can, person was struggling. Can we chalk this to uh, vanity by the parents, perhaps? Yes. Uh, it is vanity. Wow. It is vanity. Vanity yeah. for, for those who are uninitiated means uh, apa uh. Uh, keinginan untuk menunjuk benda uh. yang kita tak patut tunjuk. Flex lah, flex. <laughs> ah yes, flexing, flexing. But that's almost like a flex, eh? Ah, flex, Back then yeah. we call it vanity. It's just vanity. Yeah. For example, uh, buying an expensive car, ah, uh, while not being able to afford it just because of vanity, you vain. Betul. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, check up as a vain and check up as a business. Uh, do you have any tips that untuk uh, entrepreneurs yang yang zaman sekarang ni, they 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 facing struggle. If I am facing some struggle sometimes, so sometimes I kata, oh, hmm. kalau jadi pekerja je ni. Tak payah nak fikir semua masalah Betul. yang multifaceted ni. Uh, what can we do? How how do we get help? Uh, to whom should we turn to? So, Tiny, I'm a I'm a believer that entrepreneurs are created because they are in contact with other entrepreneurs. Mm. So, if you are in an environment where you have not witnessed uh, entrepreneurship in all its glory mm-hmm. and 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 bad times, mm-hmm. right? Uh, it's difficult for someone to jump into it, right? But now that more and more people need to jump into entrepreneurship, the first thing they need to find is a network. Mm-hmm. Okay, kena ada support network. It's one of those things that you can't do alone. Uh, if you are married, it's better if you have a spouse that's very supportive. Um, even better if you can go into business with your spouse, which I have done mm-hmm. and it has been a great experience. So right? have I. Alhamdulillah, great. So support network, number one. Uh, the second thing is this. The plan of the business is something which I see a lot of entrepreneurs miss out on. Business is not just about jumping into it, gut feel, mm-hmm. and then uh, tawakal, masuk, okay, let's see what happens, right? Actually, a lot of worry is about planning, mm-hmm. all right? You need to be able to do your financials. You need to be able to uh, plan a strategy and define a strategy and communicate a strategy for yourself first, Okay. So there are a lot of support that you can get for doing things like this, right? Why that's important is because then you have a plan and you will know whether you're on track or off track, mm-hmm. right? If you don't have that and you just dive into things, every day is going to start looking like a mess. Mm-hmm. Every day you don't know you're sinking or, 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 or flying or are you uh, uh, actually getting to your destination? You don't know, right? So the plan is very important. And uh, the last one, which I I think a lot of Malaysian businesses in particular uh, miss, is this thing called uh, product market fit, mm-hmm. right? So your product is actually in so much demand in the market uh, that if you put it out there at the right price, it just gets snapped up straight away. Okay, product market fit. 
I don't see that happening because um, Malaysia is a competitive market mm-hmm. and a lot of people are offering exactly the same thing. The the USP, uh, whether it's a very small thing like a better service, mm-hmm. right? Or a better brand or a, a, you know, a digital communication strategy in terms of content creation or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, there are too many businesses that are not differentiating themselves, right? So the product market fit is something which I hope more entrepreneurs can actually define and get better at. Mm-hmm. Because if you do so, it will make your business a lot easier to operate because people are buying your product. Mm. So um, next question is your routine. I mean, being a businessman, entrepreneur, how do you keep yourself healthy at the point at least mentally healthy at least mentally ah. physically also lah. <laughs> I mean we have, we have to pick one like one hmm. of them might be easier to do because yeah so uh, I, the mental kita boleh set tapi the the physical too sometimes malas ah <laughs> susah it's a bit difficult okay um i don't i'm not i'm not a, a fan of uh, hustle culture mm. i believe in uh, i believe entrepreneurship gives you freedom to have a balanced life and all of us have priorities that are personal to us. So what I do is, firstly, I'm a morning person. So biologically, I'm someone who loves the morning. Mm-hmm. I usually go to bed at about 10 o'clock. So if I start to receive messages from 9.15, 9.30, usually tak dapat balas lah, right? So I sleep at about 10 and I'm up uh, 5 something, 6 o'clock, Okay. Uh, jump out of bed full of energy and what I like to do in the morning is of course uh, solat and it's very important because it focuses your mind on uh, the challenges ahead and exactly uh, your purpose in life your purpose in life is not to be an entrepreneur your purpose in life is not to whatever else is actually to figure out uh, you know <coughs> your place in the in the hereafter that's what I believe right mm-hmm. Um, I hear it lah. Yeah, I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. Yeah, so so that's why I I I I think that's very important. Then I like to spend time with my children. Mm-hmm. So first thing in the morning before they go to school, have a conversation. Uh, you know, prepare them mentally for their day ahead. Um, you know, make them feel positive about it, right? Uh, and then once that is done, then I have my personal time. So you know, from about seven plus seven fifteen seven thirty onwards, uh, I do a lot of reading. Mm-hmm. I uh I spend time with my with my wife uh, while reading, um and I try not to talk to anybody else, okay? Because I feel like uh the noise of the day once it starts you cannot stop it. Right, right, right. So so basically no social media in the in, in the mornings. Of course I use social media. Right. I, I I use social media all day long. So it's part of the reading that you mentioned. Yes. Why? I need to look at videos like financial advice. <laughs> I need to look at other content creators. Right. I need to learn. I need to say that, okay, look at this video, look at the engagement. Uh, this is how long it was. This was the production style. Uh, this was the script that was used. This was the ratio of English versus BM. Mm-hmm. And it did pretty well, right? Uh-huh. So, you know, social media is not just about consuming. You can also learn from it, That's right? True. You can actually read between the lines. There's so much work that goes behind each video, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I like to keep my mornings quiet uh, and then I, I I get a workout in. I'm actually trying to get fitter. Uh, and then most of my meetings, I keep to after lunch, mm. right? Because that's when energy actually goes down, right? And when it goes down, then when I talk to other people, I, can, back up. I can gain energy from them. Right, right. Because you reciprocate, right? When yeah. you're having conversations and you know, you're thinking. For an extrovert, yes. Uh, that's what yes. I read. They, uh, they gain energy, energy when they talk to people. For yeah. an introvert, they actually lose energy. Lose energy. <laughs> <laughs> so I like that because we bounce, right? And then, uh, I rarely take dinner or night meetings mm. because I like to spend time with my family mm-hmm. and uh, nothing else matters to me. And uh, then I wind down. Lah. What, what time is the end of working day? For typical um, day? Seven. Seven. Hmm. And your dinner is at? Uh, seven. Seven. Six, yeah, okay, seven. okay. So I'll have a dinner at seven and then we will have a nice conversation as a family. And uh, I try to put my uh, daughter to bed um, every other night. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 I swap with my wife. And uh, it's a fulfilling day. Mm. You know? Okay, so so the way you described it, nampak macam, and, and because you kata you tengok influencer lain, video-video lain, uh, what do you think about the culture of kids? Eh, uh, ni relate sikit lah kepada sambung belajar kita sambung belajar tu. Uh, 
about children eh dia punya goal is to become an influencer ataupun key, key opinion leader okay so uh, my daughter hmm. she's nine and she is I don't allow her on social media oh, you don't okay I she's don't, don't. Okay. Uh, so uh, I don't allow YouTube I don't allow uh, TikTok, TikTok uh, no Instagram no nothing uh, and she's okay right and uh, when I consume this content I consume it with her mm. so it's like watching TV right mm. so in the old days kalau kita nak tengok Power Rangers our mom have to watch with us mm-hmm. right so TikTok also sama lah with her I said okay you want to watch TikTok come let's watch it together right these are the kind of uh, videos that come out on my feed right but it's your feed and your algorithm lah yes <laughs> not so, hers exactly so mine is tuned a certain way right, right? now uh I I have a lot of respect for influencers and key opinion leaders. I think uh, it, it's a great business to be in. It's not just for fun. It's a lot of work that goes into being one, yes, yeah. right? And uh, but what I want to highlight is that uh, we are starting to wake up as an industry to the fact that the content that we create has to actually have value, lah. Mm-hmm. And uh, enough of the pranks, enough of the uh, dancing and singing only. Uh, you can do that for fun. Then I see uh, some doctors that do it, for example. But then they intersperse it with educational videos, right? And so, what that means is that you have to first achieve something in your life. Okay, you have to be an expert at something. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you are a dancer, be an expert at ballet dancing, right? Or street dance, right? Talk about the business of running a dance school, right? Okay, uh, and I know someone I just met recently that runs a dance school in TTDI, and I was listening to her. Um, it's a family business, so her mom started it, and then now she's taken over, and it's such an interesting business, right? So if she is someone that perhaps if she went on TikTok and just became a dancer, but at the same time shared education about uh, the business of dancing, it would be so interesting, mm-hmm. right? So I think young people need to understand that all of you are special in some way because of the experience that you have, mm-hmm. right? For me, for example, I grew up in Singapore uh, and at that time, I felt that I wasn't special. But now when I look back, I was a minority within a minority mm-hmm. because I am uh, of uh, Pakistani descent mm-hmm. uh, in Singapore. Our community is super small, okay? Uh, and then, I uh, I had family in Malaysia. So every holiday, I used to come to Malaysia. So I started to fall in love with this country mm-hmm. and, uh, and uh, the environment and the culture and everything. And whenever I went back to Singapore, I'll have my friends who are like, eh, you go to Malaysia, dangerous, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And I start to feel like, eh, you know, this is not how I feel, you know. So I start to build an affinity for Malaysia. Eventually, I met my wife in Malaysia mm-hmm. and the rest is history, lah, right. right? So I have a special story. There's so many people like me. How do you tell that? How do you build upon that expertise? And... And, and sell it as something which other people can benefit from, right? Mm-hmm. So, for example, if I wasn't in business, if I wasn't an entrepreneur, I wasn't doing uh, investments, for example, I could even talk about the process of moving to Malaysia. Mm-hmm. Okay? Um, what are the different visas available? Mm-hmm. What are the costs associated with moving to Malaysia? Um what was it like getting permission from Singapore to marry a Malaysian? You have to get this letter. Oh, uh, you have to get permission from the Singaporean government? Uh, no, actually, Sing- Malaysia needs you to give them a confirmation that you have no other wife. <laughs> okay. okay. So that one is something which Singapore government has to issue a letter. Lah. Mm-hmm. Then you have to go and see a Kadi. The Kadi has to confirm it and all that. Okay, that's that's interesting. I, yeah. I just want to share a shout out there to one of the YouTubers I follow. Uh. They, they say a very similar thing. Uh, he is Ali Abdal mm. on YouTube. You guys can Google him mm. on uh, uh, on YouTube. Mm. Uh, he says that we, we talk about, I mean, to become a good YouTuber, you talk about the things that you know, the mm. things that you're interested in, mm. the things that you're expert in. Mm. So that, uh, but, but not everything that you talk about will be, will have people be interested in listening. Yes. Uh, so that you have to cari your own niche. Yes. He started with uh, playing some music tapi he's not a musician. Mm. Uh, he's just a, a guy from uh, I think it was Oxford code. Mm. Uh, oh no, sorry, Cambridge. He was mm. a medical doctor from Cambridge. So mm. he tried to main lagu, who cares? Yeah. Uh, but at one point he found his niche. It mm. was how to apply to a medical school. Ah. Well, he was a medical doctor yeah. uh, medicine student in Cambridge. So, of course, uh, he has some in the know. Uh, and then he ventured into uh, apa, panggil, uh, 
uh, macam nak belajar lah macam mana nak bahagi you punya time lah to mm. be efficient with your time mm. so that that I mean he doubled down on that and then mm. now he's like he got like about 4.5 million subscribers on YouTube very very, very successful young guy very and he's not even a doctor now mm. he quit being a doctor because he makes more I guess he's he feels more fulfilled the that, that industry wonderful Mm-hmm. You know, so I I think all of us have certain knowledge to share. Mm-hmm. You know, so you would have uh, if 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 this look, I I was doing the Uber driving in 2013. Right. Um, if TikTok was around at that time, uh, I could have made so much content about it, mm. right? And I see a lot of uh, Uber and Grab drivers do it. Is this right? Right. They give you they share they share so a lot of them are just complaining about their customer, yes, mm. uh, or complaining about the Grab system, mm. but there there are hacks. In order to earn more on these platforms, mm-hmm. okay, uh, what kind of car you drive, how you drive it, waiting areas, uh, peak hours, what kind of hours to drive, uh, which condos to wait at, because certain condo in Mount Kiara has more customers that go somewhere else because all the Japanese factories hire people and put them in this condo, okay, mm-hmm. for example, right? So all these kind of hacks can be shared. You know, on video, and it will actually become something of uh, value to other people, right? I think uh, I would I would love if my children became good at becoming influencer. I have to say that. Why? Because uh, I want them to be entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. um, and I think it's intertwined now in the future. Entrepreneurship and being able to uh, share knowledge about. Your journey mm-hmm. goes hand in hand. I guess there's a business opportunity. I yep. mean, for a business to come in and explain to founders or businessmen about how to expose themselves, mm. expose in a good way lah, mm. their businesses mm. to the online. I mean, it's free, but mm. you have to do it in the right way. Otherwise, that's the wrong view. Mm. Uh, that's business idea. Um, sebagai penutup ya, Encik Saifi, uh, what are you doing right now? What are you focusing on? And what are the... Tadi Encik Saifi ada cakap pasal uh, the upcoming project. What is that? So, uh, it's still under wraps oh. and I'm going to announce it uh, very soon, inshallah. Uh, but I'll give you a bit of hint. So, I, uh, I've decided to um, use my resources, capital, network, Uh, people around me, talent, and so on, um, and I'm I'm planning to go into investments, okay. And one of the uh, sectors that we're focusing on as a start is uh, healthcare. So yeah, that's all I'll say for now. Great. I mean, <laughs> I hope to see you again uh, in the next season of Financial Fights Podcast, yep. season three. Uh, by that time, maybe nap in the office, good, because uh, we we every time we have a new season. We'll change the setting a bit. Wonderful. So it was back then, the outside, and then sekarang kat sini. Uh, hoping to see you again soon, inshallah. inshallah. Terima kasih for this opportunity, Faiz. And uh, I, I really enjoyed talking to you. And you know, I would love to learn more about your business as well. Most definitely. Maybe maybe boleh invest juga lah. Maybe we, we could use inshallah. some capital. Inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. I, 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 I'm keen to see that. Alhamdulillah. Can I just mention something? Sure. I uh, was talking to a friend of mine. Uh, he's very famous. He's this guy called Patrick. Patrick Grove. Mm. And he set up Ketcha Group. Ketcha Group is a Lisco that essentially is just aggregating influencers. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I went to their investor day, right. and uh, they brought a few uh, influencers in, and some of these guys had about eighty to hundred thousand followers. Um, you know, fitness lifestyle guys and all that, and they were talking about how much revenue they actually generate for Ketcha Group. It's so impressive, you know. Mm. So the thing is, uh, I think. The media sector, especially the alternative or digital media, right. uh, is still quite um, um, fragmented, mm-hmm. and there's an opportunity to consolidate, especially when it comes to uh, BM and Buin Putra facing audiences. Mm-hmm. That hasn't been done yet, mm-hmm. you know. So I've been looking at Catcher and thinking, you know, maybe we should do a Something, um, something together, perhaps our, our own version. Most definitely, most definitely. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe, maybe we can even cut that off. Uh, we do not want to let the cat out of the bag. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ideas are free. Execution uh, is key. Correct. <laughs> I just coined it up. <laughs> Sorry, Patrick. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank Take you, care. guys. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam.